This is a guide on how to become a pro Tetris player by the number 8 worldwide Tetris player circulation. Enjoy! In the Tetris community, there aren't a lot of complete and in-depth guides, and I'm sure that none of the top 20 worldwide players have made an in-depth guide on how to improve, and so today, I'm going to be the first one to tell you the secrets of becoming a top player. Although this guide is designed for people looking to become the best of the best, I'm sure you'll still be able to pick up some of the tips that I'll be sharing in this video, even if you're a beginner. So let's get started. First, we should answer the question, what's the most important thing in the game? The most important skills are speed and efficiency. You may have heard of the term macro, but it's not as important as being fast and efficient, as the limit of speed and efficiency is higher than macro. No matter how good a player's strategy is, a 70 APM player will never beat a 150 APM player, and learning macro will take away your focus from learning more important things. Macro has become mostly unimportant even at high level gameplay, except on a couple special conditions, and this will be discussed later, as macro is a technique that should be used beside other skills. To become both fast and efficient, we will need to know the ideal way of stacking, and this will aid in efficiency. For speed, it's best to repeat stacking over and over, and the speed will come naturally. For efficiency, there is one pivotal thing you will need to remember. The most important thing is to always maintain a flat board. With a flat board, both up stacking and down stacking will be easy. For up stacking, if your board is messy, it's hard for you to stack the tetrises or t-spins, and you'll end up clearing a lot of skims. If you skim a lot, you're not using the full potential of your pieces. When you downstack, the messy parts of your stack will block the garbage holes and you'll need to clear extra lines before downstacking into your well, so maintaining a flatboard is very important if you want to be efficient. The next most important thing is your use of your garbage lines. You want to use all your garbage as quickly as possible, as it's usually more safe to maintain a lower board and you should only stack the back-to-back -back when you're in a safe state. When you notice you have garbage lines, try to clear them as fast as possible while maintaining your flat stack, except for instances like when you have a great back-to-back -back chain that you want to hold on to. If you've got very messy garbage on your board, or you're all the way at the top, even if you've got a good back-to-back -back chain, you'll need to let go of it, unless you're absolutely sure that you can finish your opponent off with those attacks. There are techniques that can be used to hold on to back-to-back -back while you clear garbage lines, but these will be covered later as they're difficult skills, and it's important to sort out the basics first. The least important thing is thinking about the amount of lines sent by a certain decision. Countless players go for teaspoons or tetrises that ruin their board state, and they're just not worth it. While your APM seems better in the moment, you end up messing up your board, and the cause of you losing the round will not only be your opponent, but your own decisions as well. Think of it this way, if you keep a flat board, you always have the option to send more lines as you wish to. If you keep a low board, you can always send more attack later. Again, for the super rare instances where you're sure that this last attack you sent will top out your opponent, greeting is okay, but you need good screen watching, and in truth, you don't really need to learn screen watching unless you're at a high level already. This next section of the video is going to cover back to back techniques. If you've balanced your stack well, you'll be naturally able to build teaspoon setups readily, and you can just add an overhang as necessary. There are a variety of teaspoon setups that you can employ mid game and here are some crucial ones. For the kaidan setup, you're just looking for a staircase shape on the side of the board. Three wide gaps present many opportunities to do floating t-spins which can help you keep back to back. Cut copy is a technique where you build the overhang for the second t-spin while preserving the other one underneath. STSD is a 2 TSD setup that's useful for spiking but also for keeping up pressure when you have three wide gaps. T-spin minis serve as a great way of keeping back to back when you don't already have other T-spins or Tetrises ready to go. Parapet is a way of keeping a good height difference on your board, especially taking a TSS into a Tetris. S-pieces can be placed in three wide gaps to create a TSD, and this can be followed up in many ways. Another technique that you can do with three wide gaps is the hamburger TSS, which is often followed up with Tetrises. Shichiku Train is a two TSD setup that can be used in a four wide gap and can be used over wells. Donations are a technique where you temporarily cover your open columns underneath, and here are some useful and common examples. Here the board is free high, and we need to fill the second and third columns. This can be addressed with an S and Z here. 
In this example, you can address this two height gap with an O piece, but similar ideas can be applied to L and J pieces. In this example, we have the same board but no O piece to complete the TSD, but we can still donate the TSS on the side here. Prophecies and forecasting are techniques where you build overhangs in advance. In this example, I can place the S early here, take the Tetris, and then fill in the rest for a TSD, while keeping a nice, flat board. To learn more about these T-spin setups, take a look at the website 4.lol, listed in the description of the video. For its use in real time, studying the gameplay of Kazu is recommended, and you should look at both single player and multiplayer applications of these techniques. The condition of reaching a big back-to-back -back chain is to not receive too much garbage, especially messy garbage, and also trying to keep your board low. While you are trying to maintain a back-to-back -back chain, reduce your stack height by counting to 4 to open up garbage holes, and make good decisions such as where your overhang is to accommodate for future garbage holes. Here's an example that uses a lot of these techniques. Here, Serku has a TSD setup, but he can trade it in for a TSS to get this Tetris. He uses this staircase shape in the middle to create a kaidan, which evens his board out for more back-to-back. -back. After this, he needs to balance the stack out again, so he uses an S piece on the left and an I piece on the right to stabilize the height difference. Here, so he wants to count to 4 here, but the I piece he needs is a little bit late. So before he tetrises, he donates this O piece, and then the tetris can be done right after it, which means he gets this huge back-to-back -back chain. Here is a more advanced example with some of these techniques. At this point, Serki has a huge back-to-back -back chain that he doesn't want to let go of, but he is high on his board. To keep this back-to-back -back chain, he can't just put the O on the left side, so he sets up a T-spin in the middle of the board with O and S. He donates a Z-piece in anticipation of a C-spin. Serki now wants to find a way to set up this C-spin such that it doesn't mess up the board, and uses the I and Z-piece as it's a 4-high overhang. He also ensures that he balances his pieces well, so that the right side stays mostly flat, but still accommodating for future T-spins. There aren't really specific setups for downstacking. Downstacking needs quite a lot of creativity. The main idea is to maintain a flat board without locking your garbage holes. You have to think pretty far ahead, especially for downstacking, as efficiency with downstacking varies quite a lot from person to person. I recommend studying pro players' Jaystress cheese mode replays, and also playing in your own time. Many people call Big Spikes RNG, and of course RNG matters a little bit, but there is actually ways that you can get more Big Spikes. Usually, they're mixed with T-spin setups like fractals and cut copies, and down stacking afterwards. Or if you have a T-spin, and stack around it, so power stacking. You either stack up both sides equally high, or only stack up the lines without the garbage lines on them. Be sure to like and subscribe, the next part of this guide will come out once Serki's channel hits 1,500 subscribers. Also, check out the editor's channel, which is me, Smallfish. Stay tuned guys, take care.